Yes, sir. I am uh, also a member of AMR's Board of Directors. I am joined uh, here today by Tim Ahern, who is currently the Vice President in charge of our Dallas-Fort Worth hub. On September 11, 2001, Tim was the Vice President of Safety, Security, and Environmental for American Airlines. In that capacity, he was responsible for American Security Department and reported directly to Robert Baker, now deceased, who was the Vice Chairman of the company at that time. Tim and I both thank the Commission for this opportunity to represent AMR and American Airlines. September 11th was, without a doubt, the worst day in the long storied history of American Airlines, and one of the worst in the history of the United States. While the horror and shock of that day may have abated somewhat during the past two and a half years, the sadness endures. 23 members of the American Airlines family died that day as well as 18 members of the United Airlines family. We continue to grieve their loss and our hearts continue to go out to their families and to the families of the passengers and individuals on the ground who were killed or injured that day. We also grieve with the families of the firefighters, police officers, rescue workers, and military personnel who made the ultimate sacrifice to keep our country safe. September 11th was a day of horror, but it was also a day of heroes. Later today, you will hear from one of our reservation specialists, Nydia Gonzalez, who will tell you about her telephone call with Betty Ong, an American Airlines flight attendant on Flight 11. The courage summoned by Betty, Nydia, and so many others that day has both inspired us and strengthened our resolve to do whatever it takes to ensure that nothing like 9-11 ever happens again. We commend the work of the Commission and we have been assisting in your investigation. We have furnished the Commission with thousands of pages of documents, provided briefings to the Commission staff members about ground security and in-flight security training and procedures, and made numerous company employees available for interviews. American Airlines stands ready to further assist the Commission as it completes its investigation. At American Airlines, the security of our passengers and crew is first and foremost in any decision we make. It is the foundation of our success and a core value of our airline. This commission has already heard a considerable amount of testimony about the roles of the government and industry in the aviation security system in the pre-9-11 environment, so I will not belabor the point here. Suffice it to say that at that time, the FAA set the security standards for U.S. airports, U.S. airlines, and foreign carriers flying into the United States. The FAA also ensured compliance with those standards and through its Office of Civil Aviation Security conducted aviation threat and risk analysis in collaboration with U.S. intelligence and law enforcement agencies. We at American, along with other U.S. carriers, were responsible for implementing the system that the FAA designed and enforced. Today, we continue to rely on the FAA, the TSA, and other U.S. government agencies for threat assessments and the formulation of industry security strategy, as well as the design of countermeasures to meet those threats. The civil aviation industry did not foresee the type of attacks that took place on September 11th. It is clear that the security system was not designed to deal with coordinated suicidal hijack teams with the ability to use commercial aircraft as weapons of mass destruction. On September 11, 2001, I was the Executive Vice President of Operations for American Airlines. In that role, I was responsible for American's worldwide flight operations, in addition to having responsibility for several of our business units, including our cargo division and American Eagle Airlines, AMR's wholly owned commuter carrier. Accordingly, I was directly involved in American's emergency response efforts and other operational decisions made at American Airlines as the terrible events of September 11th unfolded. On September 11th, I arrived at my office at company headquarters in Fort Worth at about 7.15 a.m. Central Time. Because of another pressing business matter at approximately 7.30 a.m. Central Time, I called our Systems Operation Control Center, also known as SOC, to advise them that I would not be able to participate in our system-wide operations conference call, which is held at 7.45 a.m. each day. Joe Bertapelli, one of our SOC managers, answered the phone. Joe told me that he had just tried to page me because we had a possible hijacking on Flight 11, one of our transcontinental flights. 
Flight 11 was a Boeing 767 that was scheduled to fly nonstop from Boston to Los Angeles, and which had taken off from Logan Airport at about 7 a.m. Central Time. Joe told me that the SOC manager on duty, Craig Marquis, was in contact with Betty Ong, one of our flight attendants on Flight 11. Betty Ong's courage and professionalism that day made her one of the first real heroes of September 11th, and you will hear more about Betty later today. Betty's family is represented today by her brother Harry Ong and her sister Kathy Ong Herrera. We are proud that Betty was also a member of our family at American Airlines, and we will always remember her. Betty was located in the rear of the aircraft, and she had called our Raleigh, North Carolina Reservation Center. After the aircraft was hijacked, Nydia Gonzalez, an operations specialist, answered the call. She then called the company emergency line, which rings into the SOC in Fort Worth. Nydia was relaying information about Flight 11 from Betty Ong to our SOC manager on duty, Craig Marquis. As I said, you will meet Nydia later this afternoon and learn about the important role she played that day. I understand that you will hear a portion of the telephone call between Betty and Nydia. I am sure you will be moved by Betty's remarkable poise and by how calm and reassuring Nydia was throughout this most difficult call. From Betty, we learned that two of our flight attendants had been stabbed, one of them with serious wounds that two or three passengers were in the cockpit and that our pilots were not responding to intercom calls from the flight attendants. After talking with the SOC, I then called Don Carty, the president and chief executive officer of American Airlines at that time. He had not arrived at his office yet, and I left a message for him to call me as soon as possible. I briefed my executive assistant on what I had just learned, and then I headed to our SOC facility located about a mile from our company headquarters. I arrived at the SOC between approximately 7.35 and 7.40 a.m. Central Time. Our SOC managers told me that they were now treating Flight 11 as a confirmed hijacking. I was told that the flight deck was still not responding to calls by our flight attendants. Betty Ong had also told us that one of the passengers in first class had been stabbed, possibly fatally. We also were receiving information from the FAA that instead of heading west on its intended flight path, Flight 11 was headed south. Also, our pilots were not responding to air traffic control or company radio calls, and the aircraft's transponder had been turned off. In accordance with our emergency response plan, our SOC managers were activating American's Command Center, which is a dedicated crisis response facility located on the floor above and overlooking our SOC floor. From the reports we were receiving, we believed that Flight 11 might be headed for the New York area, possibly to land at Kennedy or Newark Airport. Craig Marquis and Nydia Gonzalez maintained telephone contact with Betty Ong, and we also attempted to monitor the, monitor the progress of the flight via communications with the FAA and air traffic control officials. In the command center, we focused on trying to gather as much information about Flight 11 as we could. As far as we knew, the rest of our airline was operating normally at this point. At approximately 7.48 Central Time, we learned that an aircraft had crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. We furiously attempted to learn if that aircraft was Flight 11. As you may recall, some early, earlier media reports indicated that the plane that had struck the building may have been a smaller aircraft, but we nonetheless feared the worst. By this time, we had lost telephone contact with Betty Ong, and the contact had not been reestablished. During this time, Don Carty called me in the command center and asked if our aircraft was the one that had hit the World Trade Center. I told him what information we had, and I said I didn't know for sure if the airplane was ours. While trying to confirm whether the aircraft that had hit the World Trade Center was Flight 11, we learned from air traffic control officials that another one of our flights Flight 77 was not responding to radio calls and not emitting a transponder signal, and that air traffic control could not determine its location. Flight 77 had taken off from Dulles Airport at approximately 7.20 a.m. Central Time and was a Boeing 757 scheduled to fly to Los Angeles. Having learned this, and, and while still trying to determine the fate of Flight 11, at approximately 8 a.m. Central Time, 
we issued an order to ground stop all American and American Eagle flights in the northeast quarter of the United States that had not yet taken off. A few minutes later, at approximately 8.05 Central Time, we learned that United Airlines had lost communication with one of their aircraft. Upon hearing this, we immediately made the decision to ground stop the entire American Airlines and American Eagle system. There would be no more American or American Eagle takeoffs until we could sort out everything that was happening. Shortly thereafter, we learned that a second aircraft had hit the World Trade Center. At that time, we believed that the second aircraft to crash into the center may have been Flight 77. I continued to confer with our SOC and other operational managers, and we agreed that we ought to get every, all of our aircraft on the deck immediately. At this point, Don Carty arrived at the command center. I explained the situation to Don, and without hesitation, he agreed that we should divert all airborne American and American Eagle flights to the nearest suitable airports. This occurred at about 8.15 a.m. Central Time. A short time later, we received word that the FAA had shut down the entire airspace over the United States to all traffic except military aircraft. We then received word in the command center that an aircraft had crashed into the Pentagon. It was not until some time later that we learned that it was our Flight 77. American employees spent the next several hours successfully landing the remainder of our flights and trying to learn as much as we could about Flights 11 and 77. By about 10.50 a.m. Central Time, the remainder of Americans' domestic aircraft were accounted for and on the ground. Of course, it took longer to land our international and trans-Pacific flights. Many of our international flights returned to their points of departure, while other American aircraft landed in Canada and various airports around the world. For the remainder of the day, our employees worked to respond to the monumental logistical challenges that arose from the decision to shut down the entire U.S. civil aviation system. Our efforts in the command center also focused on providing assistance to the FBI and other law enforcement officials who were investigating the attacks. Our next scheduled flights did not take place until several days after September 11th, and we did not have a full flight schedule for several more days. Our command center remained open 24 hours a day for the next two weeks until September 24th. It was only weeks later as we returned to some normal level of activity that we were able to step back and try to comprehend the impact that these horrific events had on our country, our company, and on our families. We continue to grieve for our brave employees, our passengers, and all of the families who were victims of these horrendous attacks. As we continue to pursue our mission of providing safe, secure air travel to our passengers, the events of September 11th are a constant reminder of the need for vigilance and resolve. All of us at American Airlines applaud this commission and the work it is doing to examine what happened on 9-11, what we can learn from it, and how we can apply the lessons of that day to make air travel in our country ever safer and more secure. This concludes my opening remarks. Thank you very much, and we'll be happy to answer your questions at the appropriate point.